Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. I'm Nick. So now that the Record Store Day Black Friday list has been out for a couple of weeks and we're starting to see more and more price and kind of roll out for, for these albums, today I'm going to be talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of Record Store Day Black Friday. There's a bunch of links down below. Make sure you go check them out. There's links for the Vinyl Den Facebook group, for the merch page, for the Spotify and Apple Music playlists we put together every week, and the Patreon page. Make sure you go check all that out. Of course, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so notified every time I release new episodes. So it's been a few weeks now that the, the Record Store Day Black Friday list has been out, and I've kind of gone over it a couple of different times. And every time I look over it, I see more and more things I think I want to pick up. But uh, so when the list came first came out, I did a whole video about it. And I, in that video, I even mentioned that some of the releases I, re I wanted really kind of depended on pricing. Because it seems to be every year when, when either for Record Store Day Black Friday or regular Record Store Day in April, when I go through the list, I always see, you know, four, at least four or five titles that if it's a good price, I'll pick it up. If it's not, then I'll probably just hold off on it. Maybe it'll get reissued down the line, or maybe I could pick up on sale eventually, or maybe I'll just pick those up on, on CD. And I feel like the Black Friday list was really kind of the same way. I think there was like like three or four titles I knew I wanted to grab. And, you know, you know, just as long as they weren't like superly outrageously expensive. And then there was probably, I think probably a total of maybe seven or eight different titles that, depending on pricing, I would grab it. So I saw pricing roll out over the last week or so. The first thing I really noticed was how affordable a lot of these titles are. And I know, you know, there, there's less demand on Black Friday and that has a lot to do with pricing. But I would say of the 175 titles that are coming out, at least here in the U.S. for Black Friday, a majority of them are under 30 bucks. And every year there's always a couple that I look over and I'm like completely dumbfounded on why they're pricing them the way they are. And there's still a couple of those this year for, for Black for Black Friday, but not as many as I think there were in years past. And I think what's kind of different about this Black Friday list in to, compared to years past is there's a lot more rap uh, albums on the list this year. And rap albums tend to be priced a little higher anyway. And even a lot of those are under 30 bucks. But I think there are some great deals for Record Store Day Black Friday. Uh, you know, I, of course, you know, music interests are always very subjective and there's a lot of people out there that think this is the worst Black Friday list ever or worst record story list ever. And there's a lot of the, uh, people out there that on the complete opposite that they think this is the best list ever. So I think I'm kind of in the middle when it comes to that. I think there's some really good stuff on here. I think there's nothing that's like I'm you know blown out of the water that they're releasing. Uh, but I, I think there is a really solid list this year, at least at least compared to other years where there was maybe one, maybe two titles that I was really interested in. So I'm going to kind of go down through what I think are some good deals for Fur Record Story Day Black Friday. Uh, Collective Soul Live at the Print Shop. It's going to be about 23 bucks, which I think is a, you know, you always have a lot of these live albums for, for Black Friday or for Record Store Day, any Record Store Day. But uh, it's one that uh, I think it's a good lineup. Got really good, some really good tracks on there for 23 bucks. I think it's a good deal. One that I thought was going to be priced a little higher is going to be Buck Cherry Time Bomb. I think the the last Buck Cherry release that they did for Record Store Day, maybe a year or two back, I want to say was in the mid 30s. So this one's only going to run you about 29 bucks. Of course, I will say that I guess I should preface all this by saying that there's always going to be some variability to pricing, but they should all be around that same price here, at least here in the in the U.S. You've also got the Goo Goo Dolls self-titled album, which I'm really looking forward to that one. The early stuff is very punk-oriented, very different than a lot of the pop rock stuff that they did later in their career. That one's going to run you about 30 bucks. And then one that was another another one I was kind of surprised with is Linkin Park Lost Demos. It's only going to run you about 25 bucks. And like I said, a lot of times rap albums will be a little bit more expensive, but you got Cypress Hill, Black Sunday Remixes. It's only going to run you about 23 bucks. Polo G, Die a Legend, which is a fantastic album. It's going to run you 26 bucks. So those are two that uh, I kind of had considered. I'm not going to grab them for, for Black Friday, but you know maybe later on down the line, if they're still, if I can find them in a, in a record store, I might grab them eventually. Another one that I was kind of surprised with, I expected this one to be a lot more than it was, is uh, The Doors Live at Bakersfield. The, the Doors stuff for Record Store Day always tends to be pretty expensive. I've grabbed a couple of them. This one's only going to run you about 40 bucks, which I think is a good deal for, for, uh, for a Doors live album. Uh, there's, I feel like there's not a lot of, you know, officially released, uh, live stuff out there from the Doors. So it's one that, uh, you know, I'm at least interested in. I'll probably wait until I see what the, the reviews are before I grab that one. 
And then another one that uh, I think is kind of flying under the radar, I do hear some people talking about it, though, is uh, Willie Nelson, Shotgun Willie. It's a big anniversary release that they're doing. It's only running about uh, about 35 bucks. There's one that's kind of expensive, but I get why it is. It's that uh, Grateful Dead, Fillmore West, San Francisco, March 2nd, uh, 1969. It's going to run you about 125 bucks. But it's a big set. And uh, the Grateful Dead stuff, I'm not the biggest Grateful Dead fan, but the, the Record Store Day stuff looks awesome. It's always great packaging. I think this is a 5 LP release, I think. It's either 4 or 5. I think it is 5, though. But, uh, you know, for 125 bucks, I think you're, you're getting enough value to warrant that kind of price on there. Another one is Joan Jet Mindset. It's going to run you 24 bucks. You've got uh, Prince Get Off, which I think is uh, like an EP. I think there's only a few tracks on there. It's going to run you $22. One that uh, I had on my maybe list, uh, you know, depending on pricing, is this uh, Eric Dolphy, Iron Man. It's only going to run you 30 bucks, so it's probably another one I'm going to grab for, for Black Friday. A couple of releases I know a lot of people out there are really looking forward to, at least I've seen a lot of people talking about online, is this Eric Carr Rockology. 30 bucks. I think it's a, a decent price for it. Uh, Coheed and Cambria, Live at Starland Ballroom, 35 bucks. So it's uh, two that I know are probably going to sell pretty quickly. And then there's a Punk Goes Christmas, which is one I've been looking forward to since the, the list was released. It's going to run you about 33 bucks, which which was a couple of bucks cheaper, but uh, I, I think it's going to be a decent release. Then there's a couple I feel are, are a little overpriced. Like I said, it's always very, very subjective whenever you talk about anything like this. But uh, the Beach Boys Christmas, it's going to run you about 30 bucks. I mean, I don't think it's priced bad. It's just a couple of dollars more than I was really expecting it to be. And then you get uh, this Limp Biscuit live album. It's going to run you 40 bucks, which I, I was thinking probably a couple of dollars less same, along the same lines that Beach Boys released. Maybe $35 maybe for that uh, Limp Biscuit album. And then the one that I was kind of stumped on, why they priced it the way they did, is this, uh, the Monkees self-titled album. It's going to run you about 37 bucks. I get it. It's not, like I said, it's not terribly priced, but th that, that album's been pressed to death over the years. And it's a one LP release. There's 12 tracks on it. I think it's in just a regular sleeve. It's not like it's in a gatefold release or anything like that. 37 bucks seems a little, a little high for me. Another album that I've got on my must have list and, you know, I was, I, w I guess I wasn't too shocked by, by the way it was priced, but I was hoping for it to be a little less, is uh, Post Malone, The Diamond Collection. It's double LP, it's got a bunch of great tracks on there, 40 bucks for it, you know, I'll probably still grab it for, for Black Friday. Then there's like three or four that I'm really kind of stumped on. And I, you know, I get it. Like I said, I've uh, multiple times in this video already. It's all very subjective. If this is your favorite album or these are your favorite albums of all time, you'll spend more money for it. But the first one I've got is Los Lobos Kiko. It's going to run you about 60 bucks. I get it. It's a three LP release. There's some alternate mixes on there. You're getting some stuff that wasn't on the original album, but it's Kiko. It's not like, it, it's not like it's the, you know, La Bamba soundtrack or anything like that. It just seems like 60 bucks is just a, a lot for that album. So for Record Store Day, there always seems to be one of these like quirky horror movie soundtracks that gets released. It always seems kind of overpriced to me, so I end up passing on it. And then I later on down the line kind of regret <laughs> not, not grabbing it. The next one might be one of those because I'm at least interested in seeing this movie. But this is Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. It's a horror movie uh, about uh, Winnie the Pooh. It looks really kind of interesting. It's This thing's going to run you at 43 bucks. I know it's just a single LP, and $43 probably isn't terrible, but I mean, I, I think it is. For, for, for a movie that uh, isn't a huge fan favorite, doesn't have this big cult following, like I said, it looks interesting. I think people are going to you know go out and see it. But uh, it's not one of those biggest soundtracks. It's not The Crow, you know, where you could spend, you know, people, people would gladly go out and spend, you know, $40, $45 on The Crow soundtrack before it got reissued uh, just because it's such a great soundtrack. I'm not really sure about this one. And then the last two I got on my list are the ones that uh, I was probably most hurt by when I saw pricing for them because they're both albums I've got on my must-have list. But I just, so I guess I should say this. For a record store day, whether it's in April or Black Friday, I always set a budget. And I try to stay under that budget. And if I buy both of these albums, it's going to eat up like half of my budget for, for Black Friday. So I was really disappointed to see both of these priced the way they are. But the first one is Youngblood, 21st Century Liability. It's like a five-year anniversary release, which is kind of a, a dumb thing to do. I mean, uh, I think 
anything under 10 years, there's no reason to do an anniversary edition of. This thing's going to run you a 46 bucks. I get it. It's got like a signed poster in it, but you know, Youngblood is not the biggest musician out there to, to have that kind of pricing an album. Like I said, I, it's really unfortunate because it's now my love. I already have an original pressing of it. So 46 bucks, I, I just can't drop that kind of money on that album. And then that brings us to I Am Music by Lil Wayne. I'm a big fan of Lil Wayne. I have been for a long time. I don't have any of his stuff on vinyl. Uh, any of it that is available is super expensive. And this one that's coming out for Black Friday is really no different. It's going to run you 51 bucks. So it's, it's a two LP release. It's got a bunch of great music on there. But man, $51. I get it. Like I said earlier, rap music tends to be more expensive. And I've definitely spent, you know, $50, around $50 for, for a rap album before. But, you know, I, I think it's something that, unfortunately, there's a lot of record stores out there that will probably buy copies of this, end up sitting on shelves, and they will discount it. Just because I don't think there's enough people out there that uh, are going to want to drop $50 plus on that album. So I guess overall, looking at Black Friday, I know, like I said earlier, there's a lot of people that are down on this list. And I was initially really excited for a lot of stuff until some of this pricing came out. And it just kind of, it took my must-have list from five or six releases, maybe down to two or three. So, you know, and I kind of have to go back and revisit the, those albums that I really want to grab on Black Friday. And think to myself, do I really want to sit in line, you know, for, for a couple hours to grab those? Or do I want to just maybe hold off and try to grab them on uh, Discogs or on eBay later down the line? Well, that's all I got for you today, guys. Thanks for checking the show out. You know, the, the question I want to throw out to you guys is, has pricing or have you seen pricing for Black Friday that's really kind of made you second guess grabbing some of these albums? Because I think that's the thing that hurts uh, Black Friday. Well, I should say Record Store Day overall, whether it's in April or on Black Friday, is, you know, these were all, these are events created to celebrate independent record stores, but you know, if there's things out there that are stopping people from going to the record store, is it really helping them? Is it really helping a record store to have albums sit on shelves not being bought? And I see them in discount bins, you know, a couple of years later for a fraction of the price. Because I don't think it really is. But let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me the thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. That's all I got. Until next time, keep on spinning. Peace. Peace.